know that you're loved. You know, I live this every day now. I walk down the streets as a woman, and I really am at peace with who I am. I mean, I wish I had a softer voice, maybe. <laughs> and, but now I walk in love, and I try to live that way every day. cities, giving people voice, connecting people who are alive before Stonewall with people who are young today, making sure that history is preserved now as it has to be for future generations to understand what the LGBT community survived, what they went through and the, and the, uh, the humor and the courage with which uh, they stood up to almost impossible circumstances during what was really a spiritual holocaust in this country. Um, it is, it is um, my pleasure to invite up on stage uh, my boss, Gary LaMarche, who's chair of the board of uh, StoryCorps, who was the person the day after my father died who said, we're going to raise the money to do this, and has been my partner throughout. Um, I'm very grateful to him for everything he's done, especially for making out not possible. So this is Gary LaMarche. Being the chair of the Board of StoryCorps, I get more accolades than I deserve. Uh, it's always an applause line when I'm introduced as the chair of the board. People always tell me about how they drive off the road while they're listening to the story or they get a lot of Kleenex, you know. And here I find myself in that situation. So I am very proud to be the chair of the Board of StoryCorps. Uh, this really is an historic and momentous moment, and it's wonderful to have you all here. What you heard, um, uh, just now, in a couple of stories, is the tip of the iceberg of the stories we have. Tip of the iceberg is the metaphor that the staff suggested I use. I know the iceberg doesn't seem an appropriate story for metaphor. I don't know, volcano, geyser, pick a different metaphor, but just a little bit. And when we, we have a lot of stories over the previous 10 years of our existence, we're going to collect you know, hundreds and hundreds more. One of them actually will be my brothers. I, I said, I've done about six or seven story court interviews in my own family and friends. My friend Dan, my college roommate, is here, who I did a story court interview with, my wife, Lisa. And then with my brother, who is the conductor of the American Ballet Theater, and I found myself asking him, uh, when was he first aware that he was gay? And I learned for the first time uh, the story of uh, when he was in, we went to a Catholic school in New England. He was in first grade in Sister Florella's class. Uh, and uh, in those old parochial schools, maybe old public schools, they had these giant windows that you could only open with one of these big poles. Is there anybody here old enough to remember that? <laughs> only person, right? And so the nun was too small to do it and sent my brother up to the ninth grade uh, to get a boy to come down and open the window. And so David, my brother, says, I went up and the sister so and so in ninth grade picked a kind of a strapping young boy uh, to come down over the window and the guy got downstairs and David took his seat by the window and the boy kind of rolled up to sleep in a very hot June day. <laughs> That's where it all began. 